Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, August 11th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Donald Trump says Barack Hussein Obama and Hillary Clinton are co-founders of ISIS. He founded ISIS. And I would say the co-founder would be crooked Hillary Clinton. Meanwhile, CENTCOM whistleblowers say Obama is distorting ISIS intelligence. Then, the Hillary body count continues, and the friends of attorney Sean Lucas are freaked out by the strange circumstances surrounding his death. Plus, another double standard by the mainstream news media, who says anyone interested in Hillary Clinton's medical history is a, you guessed it, <laughs> Too much. a conspiracy theorist. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, GOP nominee Donald Trump has doubled down on his charge that Obama is the founder of ISIS. Take a listen. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS. Okay? He's the founder. He founded ISIS. And I would say the co-founder would be Crooked Hillary Clinton. Co-founder, Crooked Hillary Clinton. Joining me now is Kit Daniels with more on this story. Now, Kit, during last night's speech, he kind of said that the reason why he calls Obama the founder of ISIS is, is for his decision to pull the troops out of the Middle East. But th that's really just the tip of the iceberg with this yeah, story. Yeah, I remember uh, Rudy Gu uh, Giuliani, the former New York mayor, he said the same thing, I think, in March about how Obama was the founder of ISIS. But he said pretty much the same thing about, oh, it's because of the troops. That's not quite the case. This article I put on Infowars.com today, Trump is right. Here's proof Hillary and Obama founded ISIS. Basically, this is a boil down article based on articles I've written since 2013. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up like 13,000 words, I think. And I usually yeah. write something like three, 400 words. Yeah, I and there's have, five yeah. videos embedded in the and article. I left some stuff out because it was getting way too long. But, you know, one thing I didn't put in this article that's really key is the fact that Russia, I believe, their air force, they took out one third of ISIS over five months. Right. Now, if Russia can do that, just think what we could have already done with the U.S. ISIS Being should even exist. The entire time. Yeah. Right. And well, that was the, the whole thing that came out last year that there were that they knew that ISIS was going to rise up out of this power vacuum, but that would be OK because then that would help them take out Assad. Yeah. So, you know, that was one of these other things. But get into some of the details. I know there's just many different things that you kind of label. Well, one, th one key thing I mentioned in this article is based on what you just said was the fact there was a power vacuum. I mean, in 2011, 2012, we had, there were Syrian rebels that were not really religious. They're very secular out there trying to push Assad out of power. But the thing was, the West and Saudi Arabia they started funding ISIS and giving them weapons, equipment, and stuff. So they ended up being like two, three times more powerful than any other rebel groups that were secular in the area. So yeah, they basically ISIS moved into this power vacuum that was left behind by the rebels that were actually somewhat meaningful and they weren't controlled by the West. So you had that, and then just so many little things that it doesn't look that big when you analyze it by itself, but when you add it together, you see this tapestry of Obama's foreign policy. For example, in uh, 2015, he authorized the shipment of gun to ISIS militants. Right. And he, of course, he said that they were, you know, moderate Syrian rebels. Moderate, moderate rebels. But yeah, but by. He then defected to ISIS and said, yeah. they pay us more money and we're going to go to them. Yeah, I mean, like. Thanks was, for the good training. Before he started shipping guns to them, it was like 2013 when we started to see how ISIS was already taking over the rebel movement. Mm -hmm. So he was pretty, he was pretty, at that point in 2015, he was already sending. Uh, taxpayer-funded AK-47s and sticker missiles and tow missiles to ISIS. And also, another thing I wanted to point out is, yeah, at least 29 Syrian rebel groups since then have pledged allegiance to ISIS. Either they're uh, allied to ISIS, you know, working with ISIS, coordinating their attacks with ISIS, or they just join them all together. Mm -hmm. And you also point out here that Clinton admitted in 2009 the U.S. government 
staffed with many of her closest allies, was responsible for Al Qaeda, which morphed into ISIS. So this is where you know Trump is saying Hillary Clinton being the co-founder uh, of ISIS. Initially, he said she was the founder, <laughs> hands yeah. down, but he kind of walked it back a little. And here, I mean, there is just, like you said, about 13,000 words here, many, many videos, and we've done so many more, you only kind of picked the, yeah. just the top They're kind few. of the greatest hits, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Kind of like a record album. But yeah, I even put a video in here, for, I believe it's from 2009, where Hillary Clinton admitted that, yeah, the U.S. was responsible for Al-Qaeda, because mm -hmm. we went into the uh, Afghanistan in 79 when the USSR invaded the country and created a proxy war with the Mujahideen. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but... Yeah, we started, we went in there, and the Brzezinski was kind of the strategist behind our involvement in Afghanistan at the time because he wanted it to be a way to bleed off the USSR because we get them in their own Vietnam War, an unwinnable war. And that's, ended, that's exactly what it ended up being. Like, they were in there until 89, 10 years. They never won anything. They controlled the cities of Afghanistan, but never the countryside. And, of course, the countryside's where Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, that's basically where they came from. That's how they got connected right. with the CIA in the first place. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people forget that, that he was a CIA agent there. What was his name? Oh, yeah. I have in the article. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's this. Tim Osmond. <laughs> yeah, Tim Osmond. So this is, I mean, it goes way back. People, and Hillary Clinton is there on the record, you know, saying we created these guys. Well, here's, we made them. Well, here's the very important thing everybody wants should look at on this article. Hillary Clinton, 2009, like I said, she admitted that, yeah, we created Al-Qaeda. But then you had this, uh, this 2012 Pentagon document mm -hmm. saying that, yes, uh, we, the West, including Clinton's State Department at the time, was backing Al-Qaeda of Iraq. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, morphed into ISIS over right. time. Right. And that's, you know, that's something that Donald Trump continues to point out, is that by creating this power vacuum, we basically handed Iraq to Iran. And ISIS, you know, took it over that all we have to show for it is death. Mm -hmm. And we gave them all oil fields. What do you think about the uh, CENTCOM whistleblower story that came out saying that Obama was actually distorting ISIS intelligence and they're kind of outing their superiors for, for altering the intelligence to make it look as though things were going a lot better than they actually were on the ground? Well, it's interesting. I saw, an, I watched a video of of Lieutenant Colonel Michael Flynn today, I think it was with Fox News a couple of years ago, he pointed out that on the lower levels of intelligence, you got good guys and power that are really trying to make change. Mm -hmm. They're actually trying to fight ISIS. But then once you get above him, you have kind of the generals and whatnot. Their advancement is more political. So there's always this disconnect between the people on the ground that are really trying to do something good and the power structure and the only way you're ever going to get into the power structure is by being a yes man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all that Obama is getting good intelligence, but just ripping it off. Kind of like how Hillary Clinton was ripping off the classified uh, labels off her emails. Yeah, you know? so it'd be easier for her to send this classified information. Of course, putting national security at risk. Kit Daniels, thank you. And let me uh, get this because I want to make sure everyone checks out this article. Um, it's up at the top of InfoWars right now. Trump is right. Here's proof Hillary and Obama founded ISIS, and it, you're going to see there's so many videos there. Be sure to share it with all your friends. Share it on Twitter and Facebook. Get this story out there. Give even some more <laughs> validation to Trump's point about doubling down on Obama being the founder of ISIS. Yeah, one final point I want to make is the fact that states for the past several centuries, all going back to the Middle Ages, they've always funded rebels in a rival kingdom or state government what whatever to you know take over their uh, rivals so this is what obama's doing with isis is really no different than what uh tyrants used to do in the 13th 14th centuries right but the key thing now is the fact that ice he's supporting isis who are going around and beheading christians and chopping people's arms and legs and heads off going and into box europe and now and blowing up yeah places that it's not confined now to the regions that yeah. we're trying to destabilize. Now they're coming out into the, yeah. the world to destabilize us. And I don't think that they foresaw that. Yeah. So basically nowadays, we're, it's like we're going back to the barbarism of the middle evil times. And mm -hmm. before that, we're entering a new dark ages. Right. Absolutely. And actually, Alex Jones had some pretty explosive things to say about Obama's ISIS hoax back in 2014. <laughs>
This is one of the biggest stories of our age because it's hiding in plain view. It's even hiding in the front page of major newspapers, but the media won't point out how sensationally evil this is that the West, the United States, Saudi Arabia, uh, Israel, and so many other groups through NATO and others are arming IS, Islamic State, or ISIS as it was known. This is simply a branding change from Al Qaeda because the West was caught funding them in Syria the last three years to IS. So we're going to show people the mainline documentation that it is our government at the front of the line with France and so many others, England's involved as well, Turkey's involved, literally turning loose a group that is murdering Christians from Africa to Iraq to Syria to Egypt. And now Obama has the nerve to claim he's bombing them. So we're going to break down exactly what's behind all of this. First off, here is a map of the ethnic breakdown and religious breakdown uh, currently in Iraq. You notice the areas in green are Shia. This borders Iran. Iran is a Shia state to the east of Iraq. Uh, then you have uh, this area that's basically a desert, no man's land, influenced by Saudi Arabia and Kuwait to a great extent. Then you have the Sunni Arab group bordering Syria to the west. And then you have the Kurdish area in this area of northern Iraq. Now, the Pentagon, the globalists have been on record for a long time saying that the takedown of Saddam in 1991, the, the second takedown in 2003, was about destabilizing a stable country and bringing in destabilization forces and breaking the country in three parts. Why is IS now being bombed after three plus years of being given weapons from Benghazi and other areas by the Pentagon, by NATO, by Qatar, by Saudi Arabia, and by all these other factors to literally kill more than 300,000 people, launch chemical attacks, you name it, against the Assad regime who did nothing to anybody uh, in Syria? They were allowed to come in in the last six months, invade Iraq, take major cities. The entire time this was happening, even months ago, the Pentagon would not bomb their convoys with their Predator drones. They would leave them be, claiming, oh, we don't know what to do. They were armed to begin with. You remember about a year ago, whenever Rand Paul and others said, we're not Al-Qaeda's Air Force in Syria, just neighboring, that that was about our military saying no to openly arming Al-Qaeda. So when the public got upset about that, they named it ISIS, or now IS, to confuse people. But it's the black flag of Al-Qaeda. It's the same people. Yeah, Daniels, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, talking about taking out your rivals, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is really making a lot of enemies out there, putting out a lot of these secrets. And now that we're seeing sort of the body count surrounding the Clintons piling up with uh, many people involved there with the DNC, does Julian Assange fear for his life as well? Some bizarre tweets suggest that the WikiLeaks founder might be concerned about his safety. 15 of the 19. WikiLeaks Julian Assange dropped a bombshell when he suggested that murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich was one of the sources of the DNC email leak. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean, we don't comment on who our sources but are. But why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are. Rich was killed in mysterious circumstances in Washington, D.C., shot in the back. He wasn't robbed of his cell phone or wallet. WikiLeaks has offered $20,000 for information leading to the conviction of his killer. But could Assange himself be the next victim of the Clinton body count? The day after Assange implied that Rich's murder was connected to Hillary Clinton, WikiLeaks posted a couple of very strange tweets. One was a video of former Hillary Clinton strategist Bob Beckel expressing his desire to see Assange assassinated. I mean, a, a dead man can't leak stuff. This guy's a traitor, a treasonous, and, and, and he has broken every law of the United States. The guy ought to be, and I'm not for the death penalty, so if I'm not for the death penalty, I only want to do it, illegally shoot the son of a b Another was a screenshot of a 2013 tweet by pro-Obama author and Politico journalist Michael Grunwald. I can't wait to write a defense of the drone strike that takes out Julian Assange. Do these tweets prove that Assange is telegraphing a warning about his own potential assassination by the Clinton crime family? What other explanation could there be? 
Why is he invoking the threat of his own murder the day after implying that murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich was the source of the DNC leak? Is Assange alluding to the threat of himself being targeted by the Clintons without outright saying it so as to avoid being labelled paranoid by the media? The notion of Assange being assassinated is starting to crop up more and more. Actor and conservative commentator James Woods even asked for the odds on whether or not the WikiLeaks founder would survive until the election. Remember, Assange has vowed to release more damaging intel on Hillary's links to ISIS, corruption within the Clinton Foundation, and vote rigging. We have upcoming leaks in relation to Hillary Clinton. You know, the emails we published show that Hillary Clinton is receiving constant updates about my personal situation. Yes, WikiLeaks would still continue releasing the info without Assange. But he's the face of it. He does all the interviews. Assange is WikiLeaks. He's what propels the leaks into the news headlines. Is this all just paranoia? Or should Assange have somebody testing his food before he eats it while he's holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy? Because Seth Rich isn't the only Clinton-connected individual to recently die in mysterious circumstances. John Ash was reportedly part of a scheme to funnel foreign money to the Democratic National Committee during the Clinton years. Just before he was set to testify against Clinton, Ash was found dead, apparently having crushed his own windpipe while lifting weights in his home. Sean Lucas was found dead on his bathroom floor despite being in good health. Lucas was the lead attorney in a fraud case against the DNC filed by Bernie Sanders supporters. Meanwhile, prolific anti-Hillary author Victor Thorne supposedly committed suicide from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Is this all just absolute nonsense? Thankfully, the answer is yes. The Clinton body count is just a conspiracy theory, so I'm sure Julian Assange will be perfectly safe. We talked a bit the last couple of days about how the Democrats and CNN have twisted Donald Trump's statements, taken them out of context, to try to uh, create an assassination threat out of what he said about the Second Amendment and the Supreme Court. But I think what we're really seeing here is an assassination attempt on Donald Trump by CNN, by the left stream media. A political assassination, a character assassination. And you know, we've had the report, and this came out, uh, I guess, it was back in March. We had this report of a uh, guy who jumped on stage, went after Donald Trump, of course, interviewed him on CNN. Even though he said he wanted to kill Donald Trump, they made a, a hero out of him on CNN. But we're going to look tonight at how they have gone way too far. And they've been caught in the lie that they just put out yesterday about the Secret Service coming after Donald Trump and trying to uh, shut him down. Let's first take a look at the hit piece from the Clinton News Network. I guess we should call it the Conspiracy News Network. I mean, they're getting to the level that they were with the Malaysian flight uh, MH370, where they had the little toy plane, and they were talking about black holes and UFOs. That's the level of where we are. But take a look at how they came after Donald Trump. Donald Trump on the defensive again. Clinton's campaign quickly denouncing Trump, saying he is dangerous and a presidential candidate should not suggest violence in any way. Other Democrats echoing the same sharp rebuke. Republicans blasting Trump as well. That's actually a very arresting comment. If someone else had said that outside the hall, he'd be in the back of a police wagon now with the Secret Service questioning him. So as you saw there, they've got uh, prepared graphics saying that he's dangerous, that he's trying to incite violence in the full piece. They talk to a lot of Democrats, but then they say, and here's what the GOP people say about it. And they have Michael Hayden come out. Come on, Michael Hayden is not a GOP person. He is not a Republican. This is a guy who was appointed by Clinton, then he continued to serve under Bush, and then continued to serve under Obama. He has been supporting Clinton. Do you understand the psychological operation that he's putting on here? That subliminal message, arresting comment. In other words, he should be arrested for that comment. And then they splice together what he later said in their interview, literally that he would be arrested and put in the back of a van if he was somebody else. But then they go on and they talk to a reporter about this. Listen to how she characterizes Donald Trump's campaign. While the Clinton campaign suggested that Trump may be inciting violence with his remarks, the campaign, the Trump campaign, takes a different tack with this. They seem to be suggesting that Donald Trump was just calling for Second Amendment voters to rally behind him. 
Okay, so that was Sarah Murphy, and when she says what the uh, Clinton people are saying, she takes it seriously. Well, I think that he's inciting violence. But then she said, but Trump campaign is taking a different tact. In other words, they're spinning. They seem to be suggesting, can you imagine, they would even suggest that Trump was just calling for Second Amendment voters to show up? It's like, yeah, that's precisely what they were doing. But it gets even crazier. Here's this last clip. Trump blaming the desperate media for trying to distract from what he calls Clinton's anti-Second Amendment stance, even though Clinton has never called for abolishing gun rights. Did you hear that at the end? They actually made the assertion that Hillary Clinton is not anti-Second Amendment? I mean, she is the most blatantly Second Amendment, anti-Second Amendment candidate that we've had. But Donald Trump got it exactly right, okay? They said, uh, Donald Trump blames a desperate media. No, he's not blaming the full media. He's blaming CNN. But look at what the full left stream mainstream media did. Look at some of these headlines from outlets like the New York Post, Us, Raw Story, Daily Mail, Mashable, Mother Jones, Politics USA, Huffington Post. Titles like this, New York Post, Secret Service spoke to Trump about the Second Amendment remark. Oh, did they? Okay. Mother Jones, CNN says uh, Secret Service has spoken to Trump about Second Amendment people. They all refer to the CNN story. Nobody does their own reporting. Nobody calls up the Secret Service and asks them. They just repeat in an echo chamber what CNN has said. And then they go to this point. They have uh, Huffington Post say, U.S. Secret Service post a sinister statement after Donald Trump suggests it's okay to shoot Hillary Clinton. What was that sinister statement? They said, we're aware of the comment. And we're going to show more of that. But then they go on with this. This is uh, Politicus, okay, saying Donald Trump is now calling the U.S. Secret Service a bunch of liars. No, what he did was he called CNN. A bunch of liars. Now, Dan Bongino went on CNN as they're pushing this story about Donald Trump calling for an assassination as they went in and said that uh, the Secret Service is actually talking to uh, Donald Trump and his campaign. He didn't buy it for a minute. Here's the exchange with Dan Bongino. Listen, we can disagree about how imprudent he worded that, but to suggest that he was calling to violence means to me that you came into this with the idea that Donald Trump was calling to violence, let me make the case afterwards. You didn't come into this with a clear and open mind. Listen, I was I endorsed Cruz in the primary campaign. I'm not a Trump surrogate. I'm supporting him. Yeah. Okay, now that was Dan Bongino. He's a former Secret Service agent. He's running for Congress. We've interviewed him multiple times here at InfoWars. They put him in a situation three against one, but he wasn't going to be intimidated. And one of the things that he said I think is very important, he gave them the benefit of the doubt. He said, uh, I don't think you had an open mind. I think you already heard what you wanted to hear, and uh, that's the way you came out of this. They understand precisely what they're doing. They're deliberately lying to people. They understand that the Democrat base is extremely irrationally afraid of guns. And anytime you talk about the Second Amendment, you can scare them by saying they're calling for civil war. That's why CNN is doing this. Now, he goes on and they have a back and forth, a very testy back and forth between Don Lemon and Dan Bongino about uh, his Secret Service uh, aspect or his perspective on this against these other three people. Listen to this back and forth. You should be ashamed Don, of yourself. It doesn't make it. Don, I, I, frankly, I'm ashamed that, that you're talking to me as if I'm a child when 12 years of my life. No, I was you're a treating me as a child because you're telling me what I'm supposed you to hear. You're to be a TV and you're sitting here on television here lying to the American. Okay, again, they say uh, Lemon tries to shame him. Say, you should be ashamed of yourself. And he says, you should be ashamed of treating me like a child. I spent 12 years in the Secret Service putting my life on the line while you were learning to be a TV personality. Ow. That really must have hurt. But that didn't stop them. They continued on with this, and here's where Dan Bongino lays it on the line. It was a presidential candidate giving a speech where he was talking about the Second Amendment. This isn't even close to the... The Secret Service would laugh this off if you brought this in their office. The Secret Service is not laughing it off, by the way. It's sort of a you know, subtle call to violence. Secret Service official Twitter account that says the Secret Service is aware of the comments made earlier this afternoon. And as you said, laughing it off. They're not laughing it off. They're, They're not laughing. That's it. exactly right. Don, I actually talk to Secret Service agents who work on the job still. I work there for... Or have them call me, but Believe go ahead. Me, they think this is ridiculous. And again, you can hear David Gergen there, and I'm sure they put him out as a Republican, even though he's been with Clinton ever since Bill Clinton was there. He was put in first by Ford, then by Reagan. Then it became a Clinton appointee, and he's been with Hillary ever since. But going back to what they said there, they put up that Secret Service tweet saying, we are aware of the comment. 
the way I read that, it's like, leave us alone. But they take it as proof that they've talked to Trump. So Lemon and Gergen say, well, they're not laughing it off now, Bongino. Bongino says, I'm in contact with them. They are laughing at it. And Lemon said, well, have them call me. No, what Lemon should have done was he should have called the Secret Service. He didn't do that. CNN didn't do that. But Reuters did. And here's what they found out. Here's a story as RT covers it. Uh, they point out the CNN story is a hoax. Now, that's a quote from Donald Trump after they've, uh, Reuters has talked to them. Uh, CNN said, Secret Service officials confirmed to CNN that the uh, U.S. Secret Service has spoken to Trump campaign regarding his Second Amendment comments. That was on the 10th of August. Then they came out, another CNN reporter says, breaking, U.S. Secret Service has spoken to Trump campaign regarding Second Amendment comments and more than one conversation. Then Donald Trump came out and said, there is no such meeting or conversation that's ever happened. This is a made up story by low ratings CNN. Then the real news came out. Donald Trump tweeted it when it happened. He said, Reuters just announced the Secret Service never spoke to me or my campaign. It is a made up story by CNN, a hoax, totally dishonest. But understand that now we've got, still 12 hours later, CNN is still pushing the narrative that Trump has been talked to and talked to multiple times. Here's what Reuters said. A federal official on Wednesday said the U.S. Secret Service had not formally spoken with Republican Donald Trump's presidential campaign regarding his suggestion a day earlier that gun rights activists could stop Democratic rival Hillary Clinton from curtailing their access to firearms. Following Trump's comment at a rally on Tuesday, a federal official familiar with the matter told Reuters that there had been no formal conversations between the Secret Service and the Trump campaign. And then they say, earlier, CNN had reported that there had been multiple conversations between the campaign and the agency. That is why, as Drudge tweeted out earlier today, CNN fell to third place with Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon against even MSNBC. The game is up. They have lost in their assassination attempt. They've merely shot themselves. For InfoWars, I'm David Knight. Again, um, the media the first day or so ignored this. They didn't give it too much coverage back when he pointed out that Hillary was the founder of ISIS. Now he's saying Obama and Hillary are the founders of it. We actually have a clip we're importing into the computer right now of uh, Hillary back in 2010 saying the U.S. government founded Al-Qaeda. Well, Hillary was the head of the State Department that brought in the Wahhabists, Al-Qaeda, to take over Libya, to take over Egypt, and take over Syria. So she is the modern founder of the Islamic State. She was presiding, kind of like they'll talk about, you know, the British prime minister who helped found Israel, saying, you know, he's like co-founder of it or something. Or they'll talk about uh, how Lawrence of Arabia helped co-found Saudi Arabia. She presided over it, and so did Obama. And so did the mainstream media. You're all co-founders of it. By the way, we have finally dug up the clips where I was saying that years ago. Uh, because it's true. It's great to know that Trump understands what's happening, but they try to misrepresent it all. Here is Trump. Then Obama came in, and normally you want to clean up. He made a bigger mess out of it. He made such a mess. And then you had Hillary with Libya. So sad. In fact, in many respects, you know, they honor President Obama. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS, okay? He's the founder. He founded ISIS. And I would say the co-founder would be Crooked Hillary Clinton. Co-founder. Crooked Hillary Clinton. Ladies and gentlemen, that is pure statesmanship, pure leadership. We have been captured by globalists that have it totally over on us. And because they did such outrageous things, they think we won't expose it because it sounds crazy to say what they've done. But the head of defense intelligence, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dempsey, all of them have come out and said this. We have senators saying it years ago. All Trump did on the Second Amendment was basically say for my cold, dead hands in a very watered-down way, well, I guess if they ignore everything and try to get rid of it, I guess it goes back to the Second Amendment. Oh, my gosh, it's the worst thing we ever heard. Meanwhile, Crooked Hillary, during the break, I was watching her on CNN. She's giving a speech uh, on economics. 
And I heard her say, how dare Donald Trump say he helps the U.S. lead in economics? Why, we did. Trump never said he was leading us in economics. Trump said that he would help us lead in, in economics. This woman literally sold us out to China, you name it, on trade deals. So let's see whatever crooked Hillary's talking about right now. The founder, the co-founder of ISIS. We now take you to her live speech. It's not... Again, this is crooked Hillary. ...in America anymore, and that's just wrong. So we created a website. HillaryClinton.com slash make it here. <laughs> on it, on it we list... A hundred places across the United States that are already producing similar goods. Now, one positive thing Trump could do to make America great again is actually make great things in America again. So, now let's look at the second question. Which candidate will fight for fairness? And this is an urgent need. We need to fairness. grow the economy and we need to make old. it fairer. The World tide is hard. not rising fast enough, and it is certainly not lifting all boats. Since the crash, too many of the gains have gone to the top 1%. The rules and incentives in our system reward corporations for putting short-term stock prices above long-term investment. I can't hear this. To turn it off, with the Clintons, the major mega banks in the 1990s got rid of Glass-Steagall, they are the ones with Larry Summers that made it where they could sell the same house to upwards of 100 different mortgage companies and then screw the investors over later uh, with these different derivatives. She keeps going, Trump wants to cut corporate taxes. The mega corporations want to make you invest in China and India and other places because they control those governments and want to make you go through their investment systems to even get into the country. They want to make it cost prohibitive to operate here because they've got the third world sewn up and the rare earth minerals to construct it all. This is globalism. A global rigged crony capitalist system of fraud. He says, we got the highest corporate tax in the world, 50%. We're going to lower that down to 10%. The Chinese are at 15, it's below them. <laughs> They're still going to pay taxes. They're just going to come here. They pay nothing now. Google pays 3%. Apple pays zero. Microsoft, close to zero corporate tax. They wrote it. The Warren Buffetts, the, 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 the Bill Gates, who are the biggest contributors to the Democratic Party after Goldman Sachs, who are the biggest contributors to get your guns, the biggest contributors for open borders, and no one even knows they run the Democratic Party. They wrote the laws in the 90s to exempt themselves. And they get up on TV and go, my secretary pays more than I do. I want to change those laws. I'm Warren Buffett. And then you watch the end of the ABC This Week show on Sunday. And it says, underwritten by Berkshire Hathaway, paying for that to get higher taxes raised in the middle class. Because wait for it. Warren Buffett, 20 years running, is the number one recipient of corporate welfare and bailouts. Google it. Warren Buffett, biggest recipient of bailouts. He promoted. He is a giant fraud, robbing poor people, robbing the middle class of jobs, sucking off the government. He sucked hundreds of billions of dollars into his company in just the last year alone. You go back to 2008, he got 400 plus billion for his company in one year. And they see a rich guy not preying on poor people like Trump who will actually turn the economy on and they are flipping out. Let me tell you, you get Donald Trump in there and they don't stop his agenda, this, this, we're gonna have 10% growth rates. You want a job, you got one. You want money to get a new car, never even been in the workforce, you're going to get it. With all our computers and, and, and factories and systems, you, you, you just cut the price of electricity, the economy's going to roar. This is a fact. The biggest problem the Federal Reserve used to have back in the 90s and 2000s was we're, the economy's overheating. we got to raise taxes. It's growing too fast. What they mean is little people are becoming independent. Little people are becoming successful. Little people are becoming wealthy. 
we can't have that because the globalists can't compete with a real capitalist system because they work too damn good. They give you too many choices. Oh, she makes me so mad. She makes me so angry. Donald Trump wants to cut our corporate tax, the highest in the world, lobbied for by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You know who's lobbying every year to stop that tax from getting lowered? They keep saying we've got the votes in the House and Senate to have a lower corporate tax to bring back hundreds of billions of dollars a year in investment. <clears throat> If you try to actually manufacture things in this country, it is almost impossible to be successful unless you're really good at marketing that was made in America. And the fact that people are willing to pay more for it is the only reason you can do it, and God bless them. It'd already all be gone if it wasn't for people like that. And she preys on people's economic ignorance. It makes me so angry. If Trump cuts the corporate income tax... We're going to see a boom, the likes of which we've not seen in 50 years. If he cuts taxes on poor people and middle class, oh my gosh, tax receipts are going to double. You go, what do you mean? I thought of you. Kennedy cut taxes in the largest demographic by 50%. Other demographics, 30 and 35%. Tax receipts doubled within one year. Look it up. It's a fact. You know, well, why wouldn't the IRS want double the money? They want to control it. They want to make you poor. They don't want you wealthy. They don't want you independent. They don't want you self-sufficient. They don't want you to be able to operate. Welcome back. Joining me in the studio now is Joe Biggs, and we're going to be speaking a little bit about the fact that the radical Islamic ideology is on the rise in the West. Now, Joe, you wanted to talk about a story coming out of Canada, of all places. Well, think about this. Why is this kind of stuff happening? It's because of the liberal media. Mm -hmm. They don't really go out and attack radical Islam. They're too scared to even say radical Islam. And with that, people think, hey, I can get away with doing stuff. And people see what's happening, and they see the death of the American man in America, and they see that ISIS looks powerful in a sense. And you get these young, impressionable minds that really have been so lost to social media you know, they don't know how to talk to people anymore, and they slip down these dark tunnels. A lot of these kids are on so many different drugs, psych right. psychotropics, and all this stuff. And eventually, they sit on the internet, they watch these videos, and they become brainwashed. And here you got this guy right here. It's an article by the Globe and Mail. It says, who was Aaron Driver? What we should, or what we know so far about the man killed in Strathroy, Ontario, Canada. Now, he was a son of a Canadian Forces Corporal. Uh, and was well known to authorities as a staunch Islamic State supporter. He says openly supporting them on his social media. Yeah, on Facebook, on all this stuff, talking about it, how he supports it. He actually went by the name Haran Abdurrahman on social media. So, I mean, red flag there. And the reason this guy was actually able to be caught before um, he was able to carry out a series of attacks, um, a tip from the FBI came in and... Uh, they gave the Royal Canadian Mounted Police a video, a martyrdom video, where this guy is talking about how he was going to go out and blow up a area during rush hour traffic in Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, what did happen is he was successfully able to detonate a, a first explosion that hurt himself and a cab driver, and there was a little bit of damage. Uh, police were able to get there in time and shoot him and kill him before he was able to set off a second device. Uh, the interesting thing is, father says right here, he says he did not understand how the 24-year-old son was able to compile bomb materials while he was the subject of a terrorism peace bond. Wow. So we've seen this time and time again how the FBI has yeah, intervened. We're watching you because yeah. you're openly supporting ISIS, but meanwhile, we're going to let you collect the goods to build a bomb. Well, the interesting thing is, is these are just kids with ideas, mm -hmm. and they have no way to facilitate these actual attacks and carry them out until the FBI and other, you know, alphabet agencies step in and help facilitate this guy. There's always some guy who's undercover that helps these kids out, these people out, and uh, get them the materials they need, set them up with the right people, and then allow them to do something. Thank God there wasn't a whole lot of people that were hurt. But uh, like you said, in an interview with the National Post, Wayne Driver confirmed his son, an ardent ISIL supporter, had died when police raided his home. Um, he said, yes, that was my son, Aaron, who was shot and killed. Our worst nightmare has come true. 
as sad and shocked as I am, it doesn't surprise me that it has come to this. So yeah, I mean, he he sees his son is going down the wrong path, and I mean, that's what that's what happens if you you hang out with terrorists. If you're showing support for terrorism, there are consequences for that. Just like we're seeing now uh, with the young teenager who uh, Jalen Young out of Mississippi. She was just sentenced today to 12 years in prison. Her and her her fiance, her boyfriend. They were going to go join ISIS on their honeymoon. Disguise. Disguise. Yeah, I mean, so romantic. And look, like she's a young, beautiful woman, had her whole life ahead of her. Like, how how does this happen? Like, how is this ideology getting imported to the West? And then, of course, we've reported uh, before the Dabiq magazine, uh, the Islamic, uh, their propaganda magazine that ISIS puts out. They talk about how these young people in the West are primed to become supporters of ISIS, that they want to infiltrate these groups because they sh we share the same enemy. This is what it says in their magazine. Well, these pro-Palestinian uh, uh, groups down with the empire, Revcom, uh, we hate America, we hate the empire. These are the type of groups that are primed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every time we message. go to these different uh, protests all around the country, that's what you see is this huge uh, growing force of hatred for America, the hatred for patriotism, the hatred for our flag. You mentioned Revcom. Revcom is currently uh, one of the main guys, Gregory Johnson. He's trying to uh, say that he didn't burn me with the flag and that, you know, it's his freedom of speech to go out and stomp on the flag and burn it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when, when we raise the questions, hey, can we burn your commie flag or the rainbow flag? Well, they go, no, that's that's a symbol. That means something to us. Right. But the American flag, they that call people it. people have died yeah, for. Yeah, and, and that, that was my thing as I went out there and... You know, it pisses me off to see this kind of hatred for our country. And that's why this ideology from radical Islamic terrorism is actually able to kind of flow into our borders uh, figuratively and, you know, actually and, and get these people and, and spin them around and get them to go out and carry out this stuff. Because mm -hmm. the media every day is promoting anti-Americanism, right. anti-patriotism. Get rid of the guns, you know. Also, uh, we have a primetime interview to the guy that wanted to be a martyr and take out Donald Trump. They, and, and the Homeland Security is the saying is if you see something, say something. But half the people are so scared to say anything if it has to do with a person who could be a Muslim because then they might be frowned upon and be called Islamophobic or, you know. Uh, Better to let them go join ISIS and then ruin their lives. Than, or carry out an attack than, and kill tons of people exactly. like what happened in San Bernardino. Right. Those people were watched too. The Orlando shooter, the fact that the, the, the father of uh, Omar Mateen, <laughs> Sadiq can stand behind Hillary Clinton in an area that clearly has to be vetted by Secret Service yeah. and other agencies as well to be well, able to get there. Well, and he's under active FBI investigation, so it's not as if they don't know where he is, but you know, then again, maybe they don't. But this is why it's gonna we grow. We still don't know where his wife went. We never kind of heard back about where Omar Mateen's wife went. She just disappeared, they just don't know. But we can all agree that radical Islam is bad in many ways. Mm -hmm. And in these Arabic countries, women are uh, subjected to all kinds of horrible environments. You know, in Saudi Arabia, if a man claims that his wife cheated on him, he could just go pull her out of the car in the middle of the road. The police will stop it. And I've seen the videos and they'll chop the woman's head off. Mm -hmm. And these women in Iran and other countries, Saudi Arabia, are forced to wear hijabs and these full body clothings. And this is another part I wanted to get into. There's actually an Iranian journalist. Her name is Masi Alan Jihad, who's asking men to post selfies of them in hijab because they, along with their wives, are unhappy with Iran's hijab law, right. which require the women to cover themselves up. And they, she's uh, asking these guys to use hashtag men in hijab. And it sounds silly, but at the same time, think about this. If you're a woman, you should be able to put on whatever you want. You should right. be told what you have to wear. That's got to be the most demoralizing. Uh, it's a form of slavery, right. in a sense. A, there are, are a lot of women who are um, Muslim women women speaking out against this because they're like, this is not how we grow up. This is something that was then imported for a more extreme ideology to say that we need to wear these um, cover ups and they've just continued to get even more like you can't show your ankles, your wrists, or you could be raped. I mean, they say that you're asking to be raped if you're not covered from head to toe. And, and, you're and, the and they say the reason behind having the woman or the wife covered up completely so they can their eyes, they're the only ones who can see the woman in their entirety. But it it's says, really but you can have multiple wives. Right. Well, it's, So it's you can just, see all of your wives, but no one else can see. Like, it's the yeah. most ridiculous thing in the world. Well, you're basically saying that your men haven't evolved enough to the point where they can respect you without raping you if you're out there without these clothes on. And actually, you know, it made me so frustrated because Will Smith, uh, the actor, came out. He is there 
um, I think he was in Dubai or so he was there in the Middle East, Iran, talking about Donald Trump and what an embarrassment he is and how he just, you know, anyone that would call a woman, um, what did he call Rosie O'Donnell? Uh, whatever he said about Rosie O'Donnell, he's like, I would never want a president that would speak that way about a woman. As he's also saying, I came over here to show that we're not Islamophobic and that, and it's like, are you even, do, Does he, you're he, in a place where women they hate you. can literally be murdered if they get raped or they get thrown in prison if they are raped or they get acid thrown on them. I mean, it's just these people are insane. He said, he said, he, I was listening to a thing on Michael Savage earlier. He's like, I'm sitting here tweeting out right now as I'm talking to you guys live how, you know, Muslims are nice. No one here is attacking me. No one hates me. Well, actually, buddy, they're not really a big fan of black people. Yeah. And you're there because you're a celebrity and that's about it. And they're using this as a propaganda tool to push out this narrative that, hey, we're nice. We don't we don't do this stuff. Well, we know Saudi Arabia is linked to 9-11. We know that yeah. they go out and brutally murder homosexuals and throw them off bridges and, and behead them and chop their hands yeah. off. I mean, this is not a religion of peace. There's something going on. Oh, man, there is totally something going on. And I know that we are going to continue talking about this because it's not going away. This is obviously being shoved in our face. Thank you, Will Smith. I really liked your movies, but now I'm, of course, going to have to shut you off, just like Matt Damon and his anti-gun hypocrisy. Uh, but Joe Biggs, thank you so much. And thank you guys for tuning in to the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button. And you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. You can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time, and you're supporting the info war while you're at it. We'll see you here again tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central.